Okay, so let's talk about BitTorrent. BitTorrent is one of those technologies that's been literally around since April of 2001. We are talking about a 20 year old protocol. It's open source, it's an open standard. Um, and even though it's 20 years old, the way it works, it still just blows my mind because it's so efficient. So you're thinking to yourself, how is this efficient? Well, scenario number one, you have large file, and then you have 13 people who want to download that file. All 13 people start downloading the file from the server, and sometimes you kill that server. This actually happened before. When Microsoft first started offering ISO downloads of Microsoft Windows 10 on their Insider program, so many people signed up which is not a problem, but when people started downloading these five gigabyte files, the servers crashed and then no one could get the file except for those who are sharing that same file through BitTorrent. But BitTorrent also has some kind of accidentally great security features and the protocol is kind of designed so when you're downloading a large file and you get like disconnected, because it's grabbing chunks and just has to figure out how to put chunks together, it can just pick up and download. You know, you start your download at the office, you stop, you get in the car, you go down to the Starbucks, you pick up right where you left off, it'll just keep going. If you're downloading on a mobile connection, say you have an unlimited data plan, um, whether or not you have a good connection or not, it'll go. Sometimes you're trying to get a file and it's so huge, you just gotta do it in pieces. And if you had one interrupted download, it'd take forever, but also because it's distributed. If I give the dude A and dude A gives the dude B and then I go offline, dude B can still get it from dude A and vice versa. Like once it's out there, the central source doesn't even have to exist. I know you're probably thinking this sounds a lot like Bitcoin and some other protocols and that's because this kind of laid the groundwork. I mean, I don't think it was the first one to do this, but I really feel like it laid the groundwork for a lot of this moving forward. So let's take a peek here real quick. Go to the desktop. I've been doing a little looking it up on Wikipedia. If you haven't donated to Wikipedia this year and you have the funds to do it, donate to Wikipedia. It's an amazing resource. Um, and they have a lot to say about the BitTorrent protocol, and I use this to learn. <laughs> so when you make a BitTorrent file, when you get a BitTorrent file, let's look at this BitTorrent file here. I have a BitTorrent file. Okay, so I, I was making an example earlier. This right here is a BitTorrent file. It's like a perfect hash thumbprint of this file right here. Now this file here is a uh, 78 megabytes, and this one is 6.2 kilobytes. In reality though, this could be terabytes. This could be yettabytes. And this file would still be less than a megabyte. And then it goes even deeper once you understand how distributed hash tables work. This is where the fingerprint of this file is generated into a string of code. We're talking about infinite file download size, understanding multiple files in a folder, can be synchronized using, I think it's like a 64 character string that you could probably get around to memorizing. You could probably memorize a string of letters that you type and drop into a BitTorrent client and then it would download the Debian ISO. You could do it. You probably don't want to, but you could. So let's give an example of this. I have a cl torrent client running here. Here I'm actually seeding this torrent file that I made and we're gonna we're gonna look at it. Oh, for the record, this is transmission. Trans. Let me let me clean this up a little bit. There we go. Things a little bit a little cleaner here. This is transmission. It's one of the most popular BitTorrent clients um, in Linux, and I think Mac. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that second part. I'm not a Mac user. Um, a lot of the desktops, this comes baked in, ready to go. You probably don't even need to install it. It's a good one too. It's no slouch. But we go here. We can go to properties. We can kind of inspect the torrent file that we made. First things first, here is our hash. Remember I said there's that one string of characters that any file can be downloaded. If you memorize this case sensitive alphanumeric string, 
you could download any file. Simple as that, and it's awesome. Um, peers, well, I just barely started seeing this. No one's looking at it. Trackers, let's talk about trackers. So one of the ways we share this data with other people is um, this thumbprint will authenticate on two trackers and there's several public trackers that you can use, but you can also run your own. They're very lightweight. Um, and then anyone who uh, uh, grabs the torrent file or a hash with this URL in it, uh, we'll be able to get the other pieces and pull them down. I mean, that, the application does it for you. And of course, there's just a file here. So that is cool. That is amazing. Now, but there's more. There's more. There's more. It gets, we're getting in the weeds here a little bit. I'm probably all over the place, but, but hang in with me here. This is the distributed hash table. This is where things get really interesting. Um, where we had the tracker, the URL that we had in the, the thing, well, so where is it, properties. This tracker, this tracker is kind of legacy. It, it works in a pinch, and actually I wouldn't recommend pushing a torrent file without a tracker, but it's not required anymore simply because this network, the distributed hash table is running. And most BitTorrent clients know how to look for it. Now this kind of works in the same system, let's see, as you see, Anycast, um, what was some other ones? Um, it's basically a, 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 a mesh kind of like, kind of think of like how Bitcoin works. You just say, have all these nodes and the nodes just broadcast different elements to each other. And they, they just know where to look and they know how to talk. And literally, literally, um, I'm going to actually go grab a Debian torrent here. Let's see. I'm going to grab this Debian torrent, open this up. I'm going to open this in transmission. All right. So close that. I already downloaded it, but I'm going to, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to remove delete files. Wait, wait, wait. Before I do that, I'm going to copy the magnet link and then I'm going to remove and delete this file. And I'm going to open up my text editor. I'm going to clean this up so you can see this a little better. Open the text editor. I'm going to drop in the magnet link. This is what the magnet links look like. It's, it's an open standard. Um, if you look here, you can see here is, here is our hash, and here converted to an HTML format is the tracker year information. But because most clients are using the distributed hash table, you really only need that right there. Let me, let me uh, copy there. That right there is providing a copy it right. That right there, you can memorize those characters, those alphanumeric memories. So let's, let's pretend we're like memorizing it. Control copy, minimize that. Let's go back to our BitTorrent application. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. I'm just gonna go add URL, just that, boom. It goes out, it talks to the DHT, see that peers, 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 and it downloads, boom. It just downloaded the BitTorrent file, and now the BitTorrent file is downloading the actual ISO file. This is 20 year old technology, folks, 20 years, 20 years. They figured this out. This is old. This is old technology. That's amazing. That's amazing. So there is, because this is a legacy protocol that's been around forever, there are really good tools to help you make a BitTorrent file. And that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna use a program called MKTorrent. Yes. So part of the reason that Debian image worked so good is because it's a fairly popular image. That hash has been shared on a lot of different trackers all throughout the internet. If you're doing your own file, it's recommended, not required, but is recommended to grab a tracker. Um, so let's, let's talk about trackers for a second. Again, Wikipedia, fantastic. Um, it really comes down to two types of trackers. You have public trackers, which for things that aren't super sensitive, that's the way to go. If you're worried about privacy, it's a good idea to rock a private tracker, which you can actually uh, password protect a private tracker if you know what you're doing. I haven't done it before, but I've seen some videos on how setting up a tracker works and it's fairly straightforward. But public trackers, 
these are open trackers that can be used by anyone. You just basically point to the tracker URL in your um, in your announcement tag on your torrent, and it just sucks. And there's a lot of free ones that you can use. This right here is, I will link this down below. I can't believe this is not starred, star. Um, I use this all the time. This is the tracker list. This is, I think, I think crowdsourced maybe? I'm not sure, but they always have the best trackers because some trackers, they go offline and whatnot. But right here they have the 20 best trackers. Boop, there it is. It's just a text file, just a text file. You grab a file sometimes that's like kind of old and those trackers are all dead. You can just kind of copy and paste. And I'll actually show you how to do that in transmission, but other BitTorrent applications too. But first, first we're going to make a torrent. We're gonna make the torrent of this little video here. This is like a little video I shot on my cell phone um, down at the pier the other day. This is a 4K clip, 60 frames per second, kind of big, but we're gonna pretend like this is too big to share through like uh, Google Drive. Let's say it's bigger than your, your cloud storage and you need to share it with somebody. This would be a good way of sharing these files because you want those files to be bit perfect. You, if you upload a file to like YouTube or Facebook, they recompress it. They take out metadata. They do all these little weird things. If you need someone to have the actual raw file for whatever reason, not unlike a uh, ISO file from a Linux install, but if you need bit perfect, um, BitTorrent will do that. Um, so here we are, here we are. So we're gonna take one tracker because we're lazy, but you can actually add as many as you like. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this one. We have our little terminal over here. Let's go to the desktop where I'm working. There we go, we just have the video file. So I use a program called mktorrent. Um, on Debian, it's as simple as sudo apt install mktorrent and you're good as gold. And I mean, it's still updated relatively because the protocol again, 20 years old, but um, the one you have in your repository is probably new enough to do most of this stuff. So let's mktorrent. Let's take a peek at the help. There are some sections we want to look at. So it's not a long help. There we go. Oh, when I started using this program, I don't think WebSeed was in there. That's nice. You can do WebSeed. So the idea is you are going to do mktorrent, add your options, and the target or directory. You can actually share full directories with thousands of files in it. And it'll still probably come down to that same um, 64 character uh, hash, mesh, uh, hash table. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So for this example, we're going to run mktorrent. We're gonna do dash a announce. I drop it in quotes. I don't think you need to though. It depends on, I think it depends on your, your CLI interface. There we go. And then we're gonna add the video file and then the output dash O. I'm just gonna name it the video file dot torrent. It's really like that's the hard work. And dash W, if you have a web, if you have it hosted on a server somewhere, that's good when you're getting a file started because you can, it's kind of like a hybrid, you know, they can be pulling off the server, but because they're using the torrent file, when other people pull down the file with a the torrent, then it doesn't put all of the load on your server. It's a hybrid, it's, it's, it's cool, it's cool. So here we go, here we have the torrent file and we have the video file. Now, depending on the way your client is laid out, um, you want your client to see the torrent file. I have this duplicated in my download folder, which I'm not gonna share with you. You'll never guess why. But here we are. Now I am seeding, because I dropped my torrent file that totally works. Let's inspect it again. There's that magical hash that's our friend. No peers, we have a tracker. Now remember how I said if you have a torrent file, you need to add trackers, you can add trackers. Well, in transmission, which if you're just starting out, not a bad program to use, especially if it comes built into your uh, your machine. Go here, edit. Boom, boom. Look at that, look at all the trackers now. If you really wanna get it out there, add a lot of trackers. And then you can copy the magnet link and it'll actually add all those trackers to your magnet link. Makes, makes it a bit longer, obviously, but uh, you know, that's encodable. Or you can just send them the torrent file. Either way, it will 
it'll keep on trucking and it'll do a, a very good job. So that's kind of the basics. So what did we learn today? Today we learned some of the basics of what BitTorrent is and how it works. And also we made a BitTorrent file and the links to everything will be down below. Of course, I try to make sure the links are there, including a link to my Patreon where you can support me just like, just like these cool cats did. They're supporting me. They liked my stuff enough to actually support so I can make more of this. And if you support me, I will also make more of this because living indoors and eating food are motivational things to make me want to make more videos. It's true. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.